Facebook right now. All right. <clears throat> Welcome to my Periscope audience. Um, camera hasn't flipped yet, so you can see me, but that should be happening in a second. Welcome to my Facebook audience. And um, I'm so happy to be here with you today. I'm telling you, man, the Lord just filled my soul with joy this morning uh, before I got to service and this morning in service. So it was just awesome. So come on, Periscope. I'm waiting for my camera to flip. So I'm just happy to be here with you. And I hope you guys are just having a great day because, again, God just blessed my heart today. He just blessed my very heart with so much joy I can't even make you understand. There we go. Hello, Periscope. So he, he just blessed my heart. So let's jump right in and get started with the prophetic word for today. All right, let's start out with a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for your prophetic word. Thank you for the precious Holy Spirit. Oh, God, we don't take any of your blessings for granted. Oh, God, we give you the glory in all things because it's you. It's not us, oh God. We need you. So I invite you in, Lord. I invoke your presence in this broadcast. Oh God, please speak through my mouth and use my lips to communicate what you want to communicate, oh God, that you might be glorified, that the saints might be edified, and that the demons might be terrified. We thank you and we believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, amen and amen. <clears throat> so um, as always, I'm going to give you a lot of information, so you're probably going to need to watch this video more than one time. Uh, what's my tagline? My tagline is, God already told you what was going to happen if you had just listened to the prophets. Okay? So let me give another formal and official welcome to all my audiences, those of you that are watching me on Facebook, those of you that are watching me on Periscope, and those of you that are watching me on YouTube. Welcome. Thank you for checking out the broadcast. God bless you, and you'll find something in here that will bless your soul. Okay, please like and share. If you're on Periscope, please invite others to watch this. If you're on Facebook, please like and share this broadcast. And um, if you're on YouTube, uh, please like and share the video because whenever God gives a prophetic gift or a prophetic word, it's designed to bless nations. It's designed to bless millions. So we're not supposed to hold it. We're supposed to release it and share it. Uh, if you'd like to sow into my ministry, uh, men, remember that Matthew 1041 said, Whoever receives a prophet, because he is a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. Okay, so if you wanted to sow into my vision, uh, sow into my ministry, I have a PayPal.me link on Facebook Live, Periscope, and Twitter, and you can also donate through Amazon Amazon Smile, Prophet David Taylor NFP, five hundred one C three Tax Deductible Corporation. Okay, how to find me is always hashtag everything I do with hash, <clears throat> hashtag PDT. So that's the fastest way to find me online. Everything that I do is hashtag with PDT for Prophet David Taylor. I'm live on Sundays right now, 2.30 on Periscope and Facebook. And then I'm live on Second Thursday. We just had a powerful Second Thursday teaching. I did part one of Save My Marriage, and it was intense. It was intense. I did part one of Save My Marriage last Thursday. That video is on Facebook, Periscope, and also on the YouTube channel. So you can check it out. So Second Thursday, 7 p.m., I'm on live with no more genies. All right. So let's jump in today. The prophetic word for today is jump. That's right. Jump. J-U-M-P. Jump. Let's look at our scripture reference and then we'll go into it. We're going to look at Acts chapter 3, verse 8. Acts chapter 3, the book of Acts, verse 8. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. So Acts is the fifth book of the New Testament. Okay? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. Okay? All right. <clears throat> so this is also the book of Acts is where the, the first church was birthed, the early church. The people that followed Jesus that organized the first church after the Lord ascended back to heaven. That was born in the book of Acts. Okay? So we're in Acts chapter 3, verse 8. <clears throat> uh, so you need to read this whole story. This is the man that was laid by the gate called Beautiful that had been lame for all those years. But we're going to read this verse. Uh, well, let's read verse 7 and 8. Taking him by the right hand, Peter helped him up, and at once the man's feet and ankles were strengthened. Verse 8, he sprang to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and leaping and praising God. Let's also add verse 9. When the people saw him, uh, 
who all saw him walking and praising God, verse 10, they recognized him as the man who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. But we're going to focus on jump, because the prophetic word today is jump. So let's, let me read verse 8 again. He sprang to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and leaping and praising God. So what does that mean prophetically? Why is that important to us today? <clears throat> the Bible says he sprang to his feet. You know what that means? That some of you, God has delivered you like that. When God delivered you like that, you know what you're supposed to do? You're supposed to spring to your feet. Don't sit around asking questions. <laughs> Don't sit around feeling sorry for yourself. Don't sit around trying to figure everything out. When God delivers you like that, spring to your feet. That means hurry up and get up, okay? If you uh, got a financial breakthrough, praise God for it, pay your tithes, pay your taxes, and hurry up and get on with your investments. If you got a chance to go back to school, don't question it. If you know it's from God and you know the Lord opened the door, don't sit around questioning it. Hurry up. Spring to So that's what I mean when I say <clears throat> don't. Not delay. Spring to your feet. Okay? Do not waste time, but spring to your feet. Okay? Then it says, and he began to walk. What does that mean? <clears throat> that means that whatever the plan and the path God has for you, get on it and start walking. Some of y'all have been wanting to go back to school for years, maybe decades now. If God has opened the door for you to go back to school, spring to your feet and start walking. Don't question it. Just go. Okay, and start working on that degree or start working on that new job. Or if God relocated you and moved you to a new area, don't sit around wasting time about what you left behind. And, oh, I shouldn't have left mom and them. And, oh, I shouldn't have left my family. And, oh, this person broke up with me. Or let's say you've been through a really messy divorce. Let's say you've been through a really messy divorce that took years. That when y'all decided to break up, it wasn't a quick breakup, it wasn't an easy breakup, but y'all fought. Y'all fought over and over and over again for years, but you are finally out. If you are free from that relationship and God has something new for you, move forward. Okay, it says he sprang to his feet and began to walk, not he sat back down. Okay, he began to walk. So you've got to move forward if God has set you free. Then it says, then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and leaping and praising God. What does that mean? <clears throat> that means when God delivers you, you're supposed to give him some glory. Okay? You're supposed to go into the house of God and give God some glory. He says he was walking and leaping and praising God. See, when God delivers you, you are not going to worry about what you look like. You're not going to worry about what other people think about it. You're going to give him the glory. Okay, you're going to walk and leap and praise him and cry and whatever it is that you have to do. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what God wants you to do. It's like this. It's like, if you've ever seen, like uh, a Shawshank Redemption or like the story of Joseph in the Bible. If you've ever seen somebody that's been in jail a long time, in Shawshank Redemption, Andy Dufresne was in jail a long time. And so was Red, Morgan Freeman's character, was in jail a long time. Joseph. When Joseph was sold by his brothers in the Bible, Joseph got his vision at 17, and then he got sold by his brothers, and he didn't get lifted up until he was 30 years old. That's 13 years later. And during that time, he was in and out of jail. He was a servant, then he was a slave, then he was head of the prison, then he was falsely accused when he was in Potiphar's house and he went back to jail. But when God got him out, he got him out like that. And you know what Joseph did? Joseph cleaned up. He shaved his face, he took a shower, he put on some fresh clothes, and he stood before Pharaoh. He wasn't sitting around feeling sorry for himself, and he wasn't sitting around asking questions. He was moving forward. And that's what the Holy Ghost wanted me to tell the audience today. Don't sit around asking questions. Don't sit around feeling sorry for yourself, lamenting your mistakes. Because this man, once he got healed, he did not walk around talking about, oh man, I was lame for all them years. That ain't what he did. He got up, he started walking and praising God, and that's the glory that's due his name. And God wants you to move forward 
that's a message for somebody, that you're supposed to be moving forward. You're not supposed to be looking backward, okay? This year of 2019, if you made it to 2019, that means you made the cut. There's been a lot of death, okay, in America. Anyway, I know I have people looking at me from all over the world. But in America, there's been a lot of death, okay? If you made it to 2019, you made the cut. That means there's something in front of you that the Lord wants you to embrace, okay? There's something in front of you that God wants you to embrace and get a hold of and get on that path, okay? Don't waste another minute of your life looking in the rearview mirror. Don't waste another minute of your life feeling sorry for yourself. Don't waste another minute of your life worrying about what people think about you. Because like this man, if you've been lame for a long time, once you jump up and start rejoicing and leaping, that's going to look funny because it's new, it's different. And that's where some of y'all are right now in my audience. You're doing some new things. Maybe you're going back to school. Maybe you're in a new relationship. Maybe you moved to a new town or a new state. Maybe you moved to a new church or maybe you moved to a new position in your church. Or well, in some cases, God might have moved you up to a new level of glory. Like you were at one level of anointing and God increased the anointing. And now you're moving in your gift in, in a way that you never did before. But whatever you're doing, God wants you to walk in it and move forward and leap and praise him and jump up and, and go forward and don't look back. Not one more day, not one more moment out of your life. Because back behind you is death. Back behind you in 2016, 2017, 2018 is a lot of people that didn't make it for whatever reason. But if you're looking at me right now, whether you're looking at this live or on the replay, replay that means you made the cut into 2019. That means there's more that God has for you to do. Embrace it. Love it. Walk into it. Jump into it. And don't hesitate. Okay? Now, in verse 9, it says, When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the man who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. That's the way people are going to react when they see your new life. When they see your new spouse, when they see your new car, when they see your new job, when they see your new level of anointing, when they see your new position, when they see your new degree, when they see your new anything, people are going to be like, Ain't that, ain't that so-and-so? Weren't they just driving a, a old beat-up car last week? Maybe they were, but you got a Bentley now. You got a Porsche now. You got a whatever you want. You got it now. Drive that car. Hold your head up and give God the glory that's due his name. And that's what I want to emphasize, not just the jumping, but because you, you are supposed to jump up, but also being sure to give God the glory. And what I say it again, when God delivers you, the scripture is Acts chapter 3, verses, uh, well, it actually was verse 8, but I read um, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So Acts chapter 3, verses 7, 8, 9, and 10, that was my scripture reference. Thanks for asking again for those that missed it the first time. So you've got to go all out and give God the glory and give him the praise. I was so full this morning in church. I was so full this morning in church. I just, I just, I was so full. God, you're welcome. And God just showered joy and showered blessing and showered so much down on me. I was just full. I couldn't hold it. And I didn't want to hold it. And, you know, and you don't care what people think. You're just happy to be alive and be on the path of God. Okay. Now, what the Spirit of God is telling me is that in the days to come, there's going to be new pathways. There's going to be new directions. Now, the Lord gave me a prophetic word this morning in church, but the Holy Ghost is telling me to repeat it again here. So I'm going to repeat what the Lord gave me this morning. And here it is. <clears throat> for thus saith the Lord, for behold, my people, I have brought you into a season of change. Get ready for me to open your eyes in new and exciting ways to lift your life to new levels and to connect you with relationships that you never saw coming. Therefore, I release unto you, my people, the spirit of faith of Peter, that when I let the sheet down from heaven and you see the four-footed beasts, you don't reject my blessing and call it unclean just because it doesn't look like what you thought it would look like. 
And as I lead you into this new season of change, uh, get ready for me to blow your mind with things that your eyes have not seen and your ears have not heard, says the Spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. So what that means is, because uh, that's the same prophetic word I released this morning in church, what that means is that just what the Lord said, he's going to start moving in new dimensions in your life. Because he said, open your eyes in new and exciting ways. That means that God is going to start to show you stuff you haven't seen before. There is nothing more exciting than when God does that. When God gives you an epiphany, when God gives you an eye-opening ex experience, there's nothing more exciting in your life than new vision from God. He said new and exciting ways. Then he also said he's going to lift our lives to new levels. What does that mean? That means whatever level uh, you can experience, new levels of health. What if you have more energy in 2019 than you ever have before? New levels of relationship. What if you meet new people? What if you deepen your friendships? What if you are reconciled to someone you've been estranged from from a long time? What if you've had a broken relationship with a family member and they finally y'all finally come back together? Okay? Uh, what if you get a new level of finances? What if you get a new job or you get a new windfall or someone just walks up to you and blesses you? New levels of life. And then he said new relationships that we never saw coming. You know what that means? What if there's somebody that you've never met before and they find out about your dream and they want to invest in it? They find out about what you're doing and they say they want to financially be a part of what you're doing. What if you you maybe lost a friend in the last couple of years and you're somewhere, you know, getting yourself a sandwich and you meet somebody and the next thing you know, God has blessed your life with a new friend? What if you've been praying for years about a spouse what have you been praying and waiting on God and saying that I'm not going to move until the Lord tells me to move and God brings someone in your life that was just totally unexpected, like you didn't see it coming. And the next thing you know, God is telling you that this is a person he means for you to marry. What have you been praying about a baby for years and you haven't been able to get pregnant and all of a sudden God says, this is the year you're going to conceive and have a child. Okay, new relationships, that can mean anything. New babies, new friends, new spouses, new business partners, okay? But he said new relationships. And then he said that we have to have the spirit of faith of Peter. Now, what does that mean? In Acts chapter 10, that's when the Lord let, gave Peter an open vision, and he let down a sheet from heaven, and that sheet had all kind of unclean beasts and four-footed beasts. In other words, they weren't kosher. They weren't things that Jewish people normally ate. The Lord said to Peter, rise, Peter, slay and eat. Peter said, no, Lord, because nothing unclean has ever touched my lips. And then God said, that which I have cleansed, don't you call it common. And that happened several times. And then the sheep went back up into heaven. Well, what did that mean? The Lord was trying to tell Peter in his day that the Gentiles now have the Holy Ghost, just like the Jews. Okay, up until that point, the Jews were used to being the chosen people and Jesus picked, you know, uh, the Jews as his, uh, Israel as his uh, chosen nation. But the Lord was trying to show Peter that the Gentiles now, the non-Jewish people, now we're going to get the Holy Ghost. And for Peter not to be turning his nose up at the Gentiles, because now they were his brothers and sisters, just like the Jews. So what that means is that in our lives, what that means is that God is going to bless you in ways and with people that you never that you never, maybe even people you never even talk to, maybe even a community you're not even a part of. Because I've met people literally from the other side of the world that were saying the same thing I was saying. Like uh, when I had my last incarnation of my band, my bass player was from India. And he was one of the coolest, kindest men I've ever met in my entire life. And he joined the band from church and he told me about his life and his family in India. And it was so cool. And sometimes God brings people from the other side of the world that you've never seen before. And the same Holy Ghost that's coming out your mouth is coming out of their mouth. Okay? So God said to get ready for our minds to be blown. But when the blessing comes, it may not look like you thought it was going to look like. Now, why is that significant? Abraham and Sarah, when God told Abraham he was going to be the father of many nations, I'm sure Abraham didn't think that meant 
he was going to have to wait until he was 100 years old to have a baby with his 90-year-old wife, Sarah. I'm sure that didn't look like what they thought it was going to look like. Okay? When God told Samuel, I'm ready for you to anoint the next king. Hello, Julian. Uh, I'm ready for you to anoint the next king. Uh, so go to the house of Jesse. Samuel went to Jesse's house and took his horn of oil and saw all of Jesse's sons. And the Lord was like, nope, 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 nope. <clears throat> so Samuel asked Jesse, do you have any more sons? And Jesse said, well, my youngest boy, but he's out there tending sheep and writing music and fighting lions and bears and whatnot. And I don't know if he's really a king candidate. And Samuel said, go get him. And God said, that's the one. The greatest king of Israel. Nobody had any idea that David was going to be the greatest king of Israel. Only God knew that. And King David didn't look like none of what they thought he should look like. And he came out of nowhere. Okay? Uh, John the Baptist. When John the Baptist was in the wilderness, he, he lived in an extreme kind of way. He lived in the wilderness. He baptized people unto repentance. He ate locusts and wild honey. John the Baptist was about as separate from Jewish society in his day as one could possibly be. And the Bible says he was the greatest man ever born of a woman because he was the herald. He was the one that called attention to the fact that Jesus Christ was on earth. Um, Apostle Paul, when the Lord saved Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul was Saul of Tarsus. Saul of Tarsus was a Hebrew, a Pharisee that hated Christians. He was getting people arrested and put in jail for believing in Christianity. And then one day he met the Lord. And the Lord changed his name from Saul to Paul, and he went on to write three quarters of the New Testament. Nobody saw that coming. How, how in the world would the Lord choose a man that is a known Christian killer? He gets you arrested and gets you killed for believing in Christ, and then God converts him, and then he writes Romans, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus and Philemon. Now, some people say Paul wrote Hebrews, and some people say Luke wrote Hebrews, and some people say Apollos wrote Hebrews, but Paul for sure wrote all them, all them other books. That was a man that used to kill Christians for a living. That's right. Every time you read the words of Paul in the New Testament, you're reading a man that used to kill Christians for a living. That's who he is. That's who wrote the majority of the New Testament. Who could have seen that coming? So what that means is that God is getting ready to bring blessings in your life in people that you would have never expected would be the ones to bless you. So when they come in your life, don't turn your nose up at them. Don't say they're unclean. If God has ordained for them to bless you, receive them without turning your nose up, without an attitude. And my favorite example is, of course, Jesus. Nobody, nobody in Jesus' day expected him to show up the way he did. They never thought that Messiah was going to be born and that he would grow up among them and they would know him and his parents. They always thought Jesus was going to come riding in from out of town somewhere. But when Jesus declared himself Messiah, Emmanuel, God with us, the Son of God made flesh, they said, ain't you Joseph and Mary's boy? We know your brothers and your sisters, right? We know that James, Jude, and, you know, Sinequa and Laquisha and them. We, we know you. They never expected that Jesus would be born among them, okay? Because remember that Jesus and John the Baptist were first cousins. Remember that Elizabeth, John the Baptist's mom, was sister to Mary, Jesus' mom. They never thought Messiah was going to come that way. You see what I mean? So when God brings somebody in your life with a blessing and it's from God, don't turn your nose up at them. Don't have an attitude. Don't judge them. Don't, don't think that it's not legit if it's from God because it's coming from an unexpected source. And then the prophetic word, the Holy Ghost went on to say, I'm about to blow your mind with things that your eyes have never seen and your ears have never heard. That means there's going to be some new stuff in 2019. I already got some of my new stuff. The Lord was showing me some stuff this morning in my private time, and I had to write it down. So I already got some new stuff, some stuff I hadn't thought about. Okay, so I'm already on that path. Because remember, I tell you every week, there's nothing that I'm telling you that I'm not doing myself. I'm not, you know, because some people have a problem with, you know, Christian people who, who say one thing, but they do something else. And actually, my pastor was preaching about, uh, preaching about that this morning. 
But anything that I'm prophesying to you, I'm, I'm living it out. I'm trying to obey God. I'm trying to do what the Lord is trying to tell me to do, same way I'm telling you. So I already got some new stuff this morning in my quiet time with the Lord that I didn't see coming. That's right, new things in 2019. Some new stuff that I didn't see coming, I wrote it down. I was like, wow. Why? Just some stuff I hadn't thought of. I was like, wow. Okay? So that's what I mean when I say the Lord said he's going to blow our minds with things we haven't seen yet, things we haven't heard yet. What does it mean, things you haven't heard yet? Okay? Sometimes, now listen to me carefully. Sometimes you have to have the courage to be a pioneer. Sometimes you have to have the courage to be a trailblazer. What do I mean by that? I mean, sometimes God will show you something and the Lord will speak to you and you will realize that nobody else has really done what it is that you're talking about before. Let me say that again. Sometimes God will speak to you. He'll drop something in your spirit, drop something in your heart, or just say something to you. And you will realize after hearing what the Lord had to say that nobody's ever really done that before or nobody's ever really done it that way before. If that's the case, that means you are going to have to ask God for the courage to be a trailblazer, for the courage to be a pioneer. That means you're going to have to do something that hasn't been seen before because you heard something that hasn't been heard before. What does that look like in real life? Well, there's two examples I can give you that completely epitomize what I'm talking about, and that would be Bill Gates and Steve Jobs. Bill Gates founded Microsoft and Steve Jobs founded Apple. Before Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, we didn't have smartphones, we didn't have pads and tablets, we didn't even have laptops and towers. Way before they came, before they rose, computers were these huge things that used to fill up a whole entire room that you had to have specialized training to operate. Okay? They both got the vision that not only were they going to shrink the technology, but they were going to make it so that everyone could have what we now understand as personal computers. Because computers weren't personal. There were no laptops. There were no pads and tablets and smartphones before Bill Gates and Steve Jobs. But they invented Microsoft and Apple. And all of a sudden, most of us don't know what to do without our phones or our pads or our tablets or our laptops. You see what I mean? Because they heard something that hadn't been heard before. A computer that you could hold in your hand. Your own personal computer that you could take with you anywhere you went. That was new when they first came up with it. They heard something that hadn't been heard before. They saw a vision of something that hadn't been done before, and they, they trailblazed, they pioneered. So I'm here to tell you that according to the prophetic word of the Holy Spirit, that means some of us are going to have to find the courage to be trailblazers. Some of us are going to have to find the courage to be pioneers. You're going to have to do stuff that nobody's ever done before. Okay? So gird up the loins of your mind. Get ready. Get ready, and, and if you feel like you lack courage, ask God for courage, and he'll put courage in your soul. Yes, he will. If you feel like you, you lack wisdom, like, God, you're telling me to do something, and I, I don't even know where to start, then ask God for wisdom. He will give you wisdom. But some of you listening to me and looking at me right now, you're going to have to be trailblazers. You're going to have to be pioneers. You're going to have to do stuff that nobody's done before. That's right. That's right. All right. So that's our prophetic word for today. I'm excited. I am personally very much excited for the prophetic word for today. Because so many good things, there's just so many good things and so much potential there. Okay. If you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen. Does anything you want me to pray for, Please put it on the screen now, and I will say a word of prayer over your request. Okay? When you see me close my eyes, I'm asking the Holy Spirit if there's anybody watching me that needs physical healing. Okay? Save so says I need salvation for my family. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now, Lord, that you bring salvation to that house, oh God, that everyone in that house, in that family, in that bloodline would get a revelation of you that they would see the greatness that you offer, 
that they would see, Lord, that your plan is better than ours, that your plan stretches forth for generations of people that we haven't even seen be born yet, O oh God, that your thoughts are so much higher than ours. Give that family, Lord, a revelation of you and bring them to salvation and that not one of them might be lost, that everyone in that family might be born again and be part of the kingdom of heaven. We thank you for it. We believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. So now we believe that it's done. So now believe it and stand on it. Okay, the Holy Ghost is telling me somebody having problems with their nose. If you're having problems with your nose, take your right hand and put your hand on your nose. Say, in the name of Jesus, by his stripes, I'm healed. Yeah, I can see somebody's having like sinus or you're having like drain problems, maybe chronic allergies. Put your hand on your nose and say, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, I'm healed. And the power of God will flow through your nose and heal you. Okay? Okay, I think that's it. Now let me see if there's anything that needs to be cast out. Okay, uh, Lord is saying unbelief. So those of you that are watching, don't harden your heart. Believe it. Get ready for it. Don't believe that, that God will bless other people, but he wouldn't bless you. Okay, don't walk in the spirit of unbelief. So in the name of Jesus, I cast out the spirit of unbelief. Anytime the devil is trying to whisper in your ear. Anybody that the devil is whispering to right now, I rebuke the spirit of unbelief right now in Jesus' name. Satan, the blood is against you. The name of Jesus is against you. We cast you out. We do not receive your unbelief, but we believe God. And we're going to go forward and we're going to claim every blessing that God has for us in 2019. We're not going to harden our hearts, stiffen our necks through unbelief, but we're going to move forward into the promises of God. So I rebuke the spirit of unbelief right now because the demons are subject to us in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, I think that's it. Well, God bless you. You know, I'm, I'm privileged to come to you every week. You know, these broadcasts are a blessing to me. And so thank you so much for tuning in live. Thank you so much for watching the replay. I'm on every Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. And then I'm on the second Thursday, 7 o'clock p.m. And you can watch the replay on Facebook Live, Periscope, or YouTube. Okay? Don't forget to click the sign up button on my Facebook Live page so you can get on my alert list. Because I have some new stuff that's dropping this year, some new materials. So I want to be sure you know that when, uh, I want to be sure you know when it's coming out. Okay? Amen. Thank you. I received those blessings in abundance uh, for obedience. Amen. God bless you. All right. Thank you so much. I love you with the love of Christ. Have a blessed day. Expect God to do those great, unusual, and new things. And I want to hear your victory reports. Have a great Sunday. God bless.